Okay, you're back for the second lecture. Wonderful that you weren't scared off by that first lecture. Uh, and actually, the second lecture is quite a brief one, so uh, hopefully that will build up some momentum as we move forward into the different uh, aspects of this chapter 21. So last time we talked about the basic components of nucleic acids, and hopefully you got all that uh, squared away and you're ready to move forward here in lecture two. So in this brief but important lecture, we're going to focus on the primary structure of the nucleic acid. So we already talked about primary structure of proteins back a couple chapters ago. Now we're going to look at the primary structure of our nucleic acids. Okay, so the primary structure of our nucleic acids consists of those nucleotides joined by phosphodiester bonds. So the three prime OH group of the sugar in one nucleotide forms an ester bond to the phosphate group, which is why we call it a phosphoester, uh, on the five prime carbon of the sugar of the next nucleotide. So this is how we're going to be able to um, breed our primary structure with the A's and T's and C's and G's for DNA or the A's and U's and C's and G's for RNA. And here we have a cartoonish picture, although it's all the good structures, right, uh, of the primary structure for the nucleic acid. So in this case, uh, we have our uh, DNA, right, because we only have the 1OH coming off of that uh, pentose sugar, uh, and um, it's already a nucleotide, uh, and then it's forming a, an ester bond with another nucleotide uh, to form a 3 to prime to 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So why do we call it a 3, five to prime, uh, three prime to 5 prime? It's easier said than done, right? Uh, well, it's because it's the 3 prime OH group from the sugar of one nucleotide uh, that forms an ester bond with the um, five prime, uh, the phosphate off of the five prime carbon of the uh, next sugar down. The reason it's called a phosphodiester bond, if you look at that second phosphate group, the first one, the free five prime phosphate group, that's important too. We're going to be following that. Don't worry. But the uh, phosphate group that was involved in that linkage, it's a diester because it has the PO C bond to the three prime carbon of the sugar above, and also a POC bond to the five prime carbon of the sugar below. So that's why it's a phosphodiester bond, because that phosphate group has made two ester linkages, two POC bonds. So there you have it. Um, and uh, because we have just the two uh, nucleotides joined here, we also have a free three prime hydroxyl group. Uh, on that lower sugar. So that's important. We're going to always be talking about five prime, three prime. Uh, it's the five prime phosphate and the three prime hydroxyl group that we're actually going to be following uh, when we look at these nucleic acid structures. Okay, so now we have off to the right on the screen here, we have a very cartoonish image, right? We don't show all the chemical bonding and the skeletal type structures that we did on the previous slide. It's just not uh, conducive to that with biological molecules that are so huge. So as a chemist, it bothers me. I, I lose that. Uh, I, I don't like to see A's and C's and G's and T's or U's. I like to see the structures, the purine rings or the pyrimidine rings, uh, but uh, I've gotten over it. I understand that it's just too unwieldy to have all of that shown every time, especially as we get into something very uh, large like the RNA or DNA molecules. So nucleic acid polymers have a free 5 prime phosphate group at one end and then a free 3 prime OH uh, hydroxyl group at the other end. Uh, we're still dealing with just one single uh, side, right? Of course, we're going to have complementary base pairing and we're going to make the double helix and all that great stuff. But for now, we're dealing with just a single side, okay? Um, in order to have a convention, right, just like in English we read from left to right, uh, in the nucleic acids we read from the free 5' prime phosphate end using the letters of the base pairs, right? We don't worry about the sugar. That's going to be uh, dependent on whether we're RNA or DNA. We know that phosphate backbone's there, so it's really the base pairs that we care about. They're what's new and different. And then finally, the segment shown here is read as follows. So five prime, because that's the free hydro, uh, the free phosphate group, uh, then A, C, G, T, three prime, where th we have the free uh, hydroxyl group uh, off of that um, sugar carbon. So there you have it. That's how you read, uh, albeit in this case a very short, but uh, hopefully an introductory and uh, approachable example of reading a nucleic acid polymer.
Okay, so the previous slide had to be an example of DNA because we ended with a thymine, a T, before that 3 prime hydroxyl group. So uh, this time we're looking at an example of RNA. Uh, this is the primary structure of RNA. This is uh, nice, right? It shows every uh, bond aside from the carbons, which are understood to be in those skeletal structures of the um, rings. Uh, but um, uh, of course, it gets unwieldy, as I said before, if we do this every time. But for a short uh, section like this, it, it's nice to see the structures, I think. So it's a single strand of nucleotides, just like the DNA case. Of course, the big difference is we see the OH uh, off of that uh, second lower position of the uh, five-membered pentose ring there for the sugar. Uh, and that's how we know we have ribose instead of deoxyribose. If we look at the free three prime end, of course, we see both uh, OH groups because uh, nobody's involved in a uh, phosphodiester bond by that time. So it consists of the bases A, C, G, and U, uracil instead of thymine here now that we're in RNA, linked by three prime to five prime uh, phosphodiester bonds uh, between ribose and phosphate. And of course, we read same way uh, up tops the free five prime end of that phosphate all the way down to the free three prime hydroxyl group on the sugar.